Hello everyone and welcome. I am James Milan and this is Talk of the Town. As you know, we always want to introduce uh, new local officials to Arlington and introduce Arlington to them. Today we are with Ken Pruitt, who is the Energy and Project Manager in town. Ken, thanks very much for being here. James, thanks for having me. We appreciate your taking the time. Um, we always like to start off um, these kinds of interviews with asking, okay, how did you get here? Where, where did you come from? I'm particularly interested to know uh, in this case, um, at least in part because energy and project manager is not a title that I'm already familiar with. Is that, a, just before we get into your own background, is, is, is it a new position? Uh, it's a, a new-ish position in town. Um, I'm not sure when the first energy and project manager, I, I, the first one was Ruthie Bennett, who's actually now my boss. As she's now director of facilities. And I believe she was the first energy and project manager. Um, I think it was since 2010 when the town became a green community. I think that it was since then that the position was created. Yeah, actually I can, I can help out a little bit with that oh, because okay. I think it was, uh, I know, it was 2012, 2013 that she shifted from being the recycling coordinator to the energy manager for town. Right. But uh, again, the energy and project manager, just an interesting, interesting yes. title. Right, yeah, and that was, so, you know, Ruthie Bennett, you know, as facilities director is no longer doing that position. And so when they hired me, they wanted me to have, um, you know, an energy focus as energy manager and sort of similar role to the previous energy managers. Um, but in addition to that, um, a role in getting other projects done just at, at times when the facilities department is overwhelmed with work, especially during uh, the summers when all the work happens in the schools, mm -hmm. um, they can hand off additional projects to me whether or not they have uh, any energy component. Okay, so clearly it's a title that reflects the versatility that you bring to the job and That's also right. what you're going to be asked to do and we'll go into that in more detail in a little bit. Sure. Um, but let's get back to, sorry, my original question which is Okay, what did you, what have you been doing um, professionally up until now and, you know, how did you decide to take this job, et cetera? Well, you know, I've been, I've been um, an environmentalist um, since I was in high school. I've had a career going through, you know, graduate school and a number of jobs, all in the environmental field. It's a passion for me. Um, you know, I grew up spending a lot of time, you know, in the woods, hiking, camping, especially in New Hampshire with, with my family. Um, and so my career has reflected that. It's, it's every position I've had has had some you know, conservation uh, angle. And my, um, immediately before coming to Arlington, I spent nine years as executive director of the Environmental League of Massachusetts in Boston. It's a statewide advocacy group that works on protecting the land, air, and water of Massachusetts. Um, has done so since 1898, a bit before my time, uh, but the last nine years I was there. Um, and during that time, um, you know, my interest in uh, combating climate change and promoting clean energy and uh, energy efficiency has grew and grew. Um, and increasingly, I wanted to play a more direct role specifically on those two issues, energy efficiency and renewable energy, and with more of a hands-on focus. Um, you know, in my previous job, uh, it, it was a policy focus and it was statewide not to mention it was you know, land, air, and water, so all environmental issues. Um, and so my interest has been high on um, specifically climate change and, and energy. And so when I saw this position come open, it really called to me. And so I applied and uh, was very lucky to get the position. Yeah, I know that um, we were talking a little bit before uh, going on air here that um, clearly the work of executive directors of uh, agencies and uh, such such as the Environmental League absolutely vital um, to get in terms of getting uh, legislation passed, um, just policy influence, et cetera. But it's a long way from from the front lines. I assume that was part of your motivation as well. It was. I mean, back back in two thousand and eight, right after I joined the Environmental League, one of the issues we were working on at that time, was passing the Green Communities Act. Um, and in fact, all of the money that Arlington has received in Green Communities Act um, funding, grant funding since then, um, since Arlington became a green community in 2010, over $1.3 million comes from the fact that that bill was passed and established a mechanism 
to provide grants to communities to implement these energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. So it was crucial. I was you know, excited to work on it at that time. You know, um, there are other groups in, in the state that work on that as well. And I hope they continue to because it's vital work. Um, but as you say, it is, it's multiple levels removed from actual projects. You know, actually putting solar panels on a roof or installing a more efficient boiler or insulating a building and seeing the direct energy reduction and, and you know, carbon pollution reduction from that project, you're so far removed from that when you're on Beacon Hill, you know, lobbying a legislator to pass a bill um, that, you know, again, vitally important work, but you don't see a tangible benefit to it, to your own work. Yeah, how nice, in a sense, for you to have the opportunity to do that kind of work for so long and then actually come to a community where that is being implemented in the most concrete ways possible, um, and now you're in charge of that, I assume. Absolutely. In fact, I don't think I would have fully appreciated the work I'm doing now had I not been working at the state level and both with the legislature and seeing what communities throughout the state were doing and seeing what the aggregate impact of all these energy efficiency projects and towns have. You know, if one town swaps out its street lights um, for high efficiency LED lights that use a tiny fraction of the energy, that has an impact on the town. And in fact, Arlington is has seen savings of something like $100,000 a year since doing that with you know, tremendous energy savings. But when you multiply that by the entire state, when you're in a position where you can see that happening, you, you realize just how important all these seemingly small incremental changes are in each town. It all adds up. And Massachusetts is, in fact, on track to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions by 25% by 2020, which was in another law that um, my prior organization helped pass the Global Warming Solutions Act, and it's because of all these incremental changes you know, across, across the state. Yeah, I have to say that um, so far you've mentioned a couple of figures in the last few minutes, and those accord very closely, um, not surprisingly, with conversations we've had with town manager Adam Chapdelaine about yeah. the green grant money and uh, the use that has been made of it so far in town and the uh, $100,000 of savings with the street lights, for instance, and uh, yeah. about the, 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 the sum total up to this point of money that we have been working with or granted by the state. Um, I'm wondering, I, I'm sh I, I definitely understand that you're, part of your role is going to be overseeing the projects that are, um, that are funded as part of the Green Grant Program. Um, as well as other things I know. Um, but I'm curious, <clears throat> will you also be looking forward here? Um, are you going to be one of the people who's going to be making decisions or making the evaluations of what kinds of projects uh, we're going to be um, applying for future grants in order, to, in, in order to fund or help fund? Absolutely. In fact, we're, I was just speaking with, uh, with my boss, Ruthie Bennett, the facilities director, um, earlier this week uh, to figure out when we start the process of brainstorming the projects that we're going to apply to the Green Communities Program for um, at the end of this year. So sometime over the next couple of months, I think, we're going to sit down, the two of us plus other, other players in town. I imagine the town manager will be part of that as well and others within the facilities department to sort of say where where are the next set of low-hanging fruit? Um, where are the energy hogs in town? Which buildings have, have problems that we can address with a grant from the state um, through the Green Communities Program that will have the highest return on investment, you know, in terms of the, the money we invest and then the, the resulting energy savings? You know, we've picked a lot of low-hanging fruit. You know, what, now we're going to get the stepladder out. Um, <laughs> you know, where's the next set of low-hanging fruit and, and what are they? Um, and that's, so we'll begin that process pretty soon and then, you know, so each year I think in the fall, that's when, that's when we're going to take a look at these new projects and I'll be, you know, at the table uh, playing a significant role in that, you know, as part of the team. Well, feel free to tell me if it's uh, entirely too early um, to be asking a, a question like this, sure. but I'm just wondering if you have, because of your long experience in the field and the fact that you've come uh, here um, with all of that accumulated knowledge. Do you have a sense, without knowing the specifics of, again, where the low-hanging and less low-hanging fruit happens to be uh, yeah. just now, do you come with a sense of the kinds of projects that you would like to see 
um, you know, going forward in this town or any town because you're, it is uh, because you know that they would be, you know, very, there would be a great return on an investment for those kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, well, I can say, you know, a couple of areas where that's the case is we've been working in, in um, the schools in town to identify uh, classrooms and hallways and, and, you know, libraries and cafeterias that have, you know, inefficient lighting that could be improved with high efficiency LED lighting. LED lights have come down in price tremendously. Um, the color options have improved. Um, you know, their energy efficiency has gotten better and better. And so, you know, each year we're limited to a maximum of $250,000 in terms of funding from the state through the Green Communities Grant Program, which means, um, which we're grateful for, um, but there has to be some cap because it's a competitive grant and there are many other towns are trying to get the same pot of money. Um, but so we've been systematically going through the schools and, and swapping out um, light fixtures for these high efficiency LEDs. And we just replaced um, close to 500 lighting fixtures at the, the Brackett Elementary School and Audison Middle School through, this, through the previous grant um, round. But that leaves many other classrooms still throughout the town. So I think we, should, we need to keep going you know, in chunks year by year uh, until we've swapped out all, just as we did all street lights, we have to, I think, also do all school lights um, you know, as the funding becomes available until they're all LED. That's one key area. Um, another that you know, we're both interested in as a town and also the state is interested in promoting is electric vehicles. So um, you know, like every other town, you know, the Arlington's fleet at one point was entirely you know, internal combustion engine gas. Um, over the past several years, Arlington has been purchasing more and more um, mostly hybrid you know, plug-in electric or just straight uh, hybrid electric vehicles, which are gas, and they regenerate the battery when you brake. Um, now, increasingly, um, we're looking at buying purely electric vehicles that you plug in, no gas engine at all. Um, and that was one of my initial projects, is to, to buy two 100% electric Chevy Bolts, which we just put in the order for. It's going to take a couple of months right. for them and to Right, and I arrive. know that from, <clears throat> from talking to Adam Chapdelaine that, that those were part of the most recent yes. grant that we received, right? That's right. In fact, the town manager is going to get one of them and the IT department is going to get the other. We had to, they, were, they were originally going to go elsewhere, but there were some logistical problems. Um, and so, um, you know, we want, to keep, we want to keep doing that um, going forward. In fact, you know, the state is, is funding these purchases, both the Green Communities Act and the Department of Environmental Protection's Electric Vehicle Incentive Program. So between that, we're essentially getting these vehicles for free. Um, and they are saving, you know, a tremendous amount of, I mean, you, you burn zero gasoline for these things. Um, and we're installing charging locations for these for the town employees. Um, and so those are, those are two areas where I know we're going to continue working and have a significant focus in future grant um, applications are the LED lighting and electric vehicles. Um, you know, beyond that, the sky's the limit. There are so many different projects. Um, What's one that, w that we may not have heard of or that there hasn't been... Um, any any movement on just yet, as if, if right. there's anything in that category. So th this is one that's going to sound incredibly boring and geeky, um, but one of the one of the main um, aspects to my job that I've uh, I, that will grow over time. I started off small, is on this specialized software that the town has to monitor energy use in all of the municipal buildings. Um, we have energy management systems installed. And in addition to that, we have in a few of the schools what's called fault detection and diagnostic software, FDD. And again, this sounds pretty boring. You know, the sexy things to do are buying the lights or, you know, actually energy efficiency is less exciting to people than, than you know, solar panels and wind and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But energy efficiency, just making existing buildings more energy efficient, hugely important. Um, and within that, the challenge is you know, if you put in a more efficient boiler um, or an air handling unit um, or a radiator system, if, if it starts to fail, if there's a problem, um, you know, for instance, during the winter, it's drawing in, uh, you know, the, the dampers are completely open and freezing cold air is being blown in and you have to heat it up from freezing to room temperature when that damper is supposed to be closed to 90% um, for heating, that, heating a room or even an entire building. 
um, you're wasting a tremendous amount of energy there. How do you know that that damper is stuck open? Um, the way you can know is through some of this advanced diagnostic software that I'm using and that you know, Ruthie Bennett was instrumental in Mark Biano um, in getting for the town. And we're installing in more and more buildings. It allows you to see in an automated way where are these problems. So then you can send out um, your HVAC you know, specialists to fix them in real time, not a year or two years or 20 years later when you realize this thing has been stuck open the entire time, which, which happens. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, excuse the interruption, but I, I have to, to say, you know, from my own perspective, yeah, it sounds boring or nobody, you know, is going to be thinking of that as sexy, but my goodness, any homeowner um, w can certainly appreciate the fact that anything that would uh, enable you to uh, make and then maintain in a, a greater efficiency in your home is absolutely going to be something you're interested in, whether you understand the way it works or not, right. whether, whether you want to spend a whole lot of time thinking about it or not, you definitely want it going on. Absolutely. And in fact, some of, some of the equipment that we've purchased through Green Community Act funding, um, some of the you know, HVAC equipment, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment, um, you know, if, if there is some kind of uh, problem with that equipment and it stops functioning properly, it can actually nullify the whole purpose of the piece of equipment that you purchased. So being able to track whether it's doing what it's supposed to be doing and it's functioning properly can make all the difference between whether you even have this new energy efficient equipment or not. Um, and so having these things set up and automated so that it sort of alerts you when there are problems. Um, you know, they also help you sort of pinpoint um, when people are doing things that either they shouldn't be doing, you know, opening, literally, you know, we've all experienced been places, maybe even in college, where you, people are opening the windows to cool down rooms in the winter because it's, you know, rooms are overheated or mm -hmm. underheated. Um, and so the, you can actually have that be part of the advanced software and tell you where people are taking things, you know, teachers, for example, might be taking matters into their own hands to make a room more comfortable. That's a, a clear sign that something needs to be changed. Um, so that they don't have to do that. How complicated, how long does it take to roll out something like that? Because my understanding is that you'd have the software, but then of course you need to place monitors, however many you need and where, how, wherever you need to place them in order for this all to happen. Absolutely. Um, is that, for a single school for instance, is that meaning the placement of monitors in every class in every room in order for the the system to really work to maximal efficiency or yeah in fact it not only do you have you know um, you know temperature meters in rooms and other controls but you also have to have you know it, on individual pieces of equipment you might have um, wires going to several different components of that machine um, to measure you know is the damper open and closed um, is the display functioning, is, uh, is, is the fan running. Right, um, trying to figure out all the things that could go wrong right. or could be working less efficiently than you want right. and then figure out the early de earliest detection system for each one of those, right? Exactly, absolutely. What temperature is the, the water flowing through it? I mean, there's a million things you can measure on some of these big complex pieces of machinery. And so you have to connect all of those. And, you know, because the software is, is only as good as the data it's being given. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how the, this whole program is going to be paying dividends over the long term for, for the town. Um, and that reminds me that to ask you, what is your sense and what do you hope people's sense in general is of how much your job is about short term benefits versus long-term benefits. Explain to us your, your vision of, of, of what, you know, town folks' expectation uh, of, of your job and the department and, and what mm -hmm. you're doing should be. Like, right. Well, you know, the facilities department is quite new. I think it's only about two years old. Previously, the, you know, the, the functions of our department were scattered mostly with DPW and, and some elsewhere. And so at, at this stage, especially with our director, Ruthie Bennett, um, 
you know, the facilities department is a, is a professional department focused on making the most of the town municipal facilities. And um, that has, you know, a cost component, but it also has, you know, um, an operational component. How do these buildings feel? Are, do, you, do you like being in them? Are they comfortable? Um, have they been well thought out? All aspects of, of, of the buildings, um, you know, the look, the feel, the size, the configurations. Um, are, you know, are maintenance requests taken care of in a timely fashion? You know, we just recently hired a second HVAC expert and we're in the process of hiring a second electrician. And so um, the, the, the pace at which repairs to town buildings um, are made are, are gonna double, at, at least double, um, which, is, which is a great thing. You know, in terms of, you know, in terms of our, in terms of our energy work, um, you know, there are very quick paybacks. In fact, um, the grants that we apply for from the state require us to have quick, they, they don't wanna fund things that projects that won't have a, a fast return on investment. And so for a lot of these projects, you know, we're essentially getting them done for free. It's free money to the town with uh, a lower energy bill, you know, the, the moment, the very next energy bill after these things are installed. Uh, but then that, you know, then accrues over time and, and, and it can add up. You know, we talked about the, the switching over the town streetlights, you know, after 10 years, that's a million dollars. After another 10 years, that's another million dollars. And then you know we'll replace as these things um, wear out. We'll similarly with replace them with energy efficient um, you know products and applications. So um, you know I think there's there's an economic side to this where you know um, it gives me satisfaction to know that basically everything I do not just reduces energy but saves the people of Arlington you know the taxpayers of Arlington money. That's it's a nice component to, you know, makes me more comfortable telling people what I do here. <laughs> um, always good news. It's that. always good news. Um, but then, you know, over time, I think from, again, just limited to the energy component of, of the facilities department, you know, we, um, Arlington really is in the forefront of communities in the state in terms of, uh, you know, forward thinking um, facilities management. Um, not just energy, but including on energy. And we were one of the first towns to adopt the, the Green Communities Act, and we've been in the forefront of energy efficiency since then. And I, I think, you know, I wanna see Arlington remain in the lead, um, even as competition grows and more and more communities become green communities. I think um, Arlington uh, not only does a service to the people of Arlington when it does these projects, it then creates a precedent and an example for every other town in the state. And that, you know, so I think, you know, the people of Arlington can feel good that what they're doing is not only benefiting themselves, but it's actually benefiting others around the state who look to what we're doing here. And some, some of what we're doing is cutting edge that almost no one else is doing, like that fault detection and diagnostic software I told you about. Basically, nobody's doing that. But when we show how successful it's going to be here, that will then disseminate elsewhere. It's an interesting um, kind of analogy, as you said, as we alluded to earlier, to that policy work that you were doing um, you know, at the state level is this is a way of, of, of um, affecting wider change by, in fact, showing as a, a local laboratory um, the benefits right. of a particular approach. And, it's a kind of lobbying effort in and of itself in that you prove the results. Other people are gonna be much more receptive then to adopting that, that approach or that technology. Yeah, in fact, I think the, the group that I used to work with that you know, lobbied at the state house is, will take data from towns like Arlington and say, you see, it does work. We told you it would work, it does work. It should get you know, more resources and more, or more legal authorization. Great, like a virtuous cycle, right. love that. Um, so with a caveat um, for our audience that I didn't warn you about this particular uh -oh. thing, but um, we always like to wrap up our initial conversations by um, acknowledging that you are not just your job position, um, but in fact uh, you have any number of other interests. And we just on the personal level want to ask you uh, to share either something that's important to you, a hobby that you, uh, that you, you know, have, have maintained over a long period of time, anything that strikes you uh, that would be 
you know, nice to share uh, right. with the audience of, of the town. Yeah, well, I, I live uh, right next door uh, in Winchester. I have a two-mile commute, which is wonderful. Um, and I'm, I think one of, one of the things, I would, I'm married and I have two children. I think one of the things that I would mention about myself is that um, ever since my son, Calvin, was in the first grade, uh, I've been heavily involved in Boy Scouts with him. And I'm the assistant scoutmaster um, for Troop 503 in Winchester. Um, I, I have an absolutely terrific time uh, with my son and with you know, the, other, the other parents and the other boys you know, going on camping trips and canoeing and hiking and backpacking and doing community service projects around town. It's just a wonderful group and I, I've had a ball doing it and I'm looking forward to continue doing it at least at least until my son ages out at age 18, maybe even further. That's great. And uh, on that note, uh, let me just invite you, extend an invitation. We have, um, on just about a yearly basis at ACMI, welcomed local Boy Scout troops into the studio yeah. um, where they've had a great time for an hour or sometimes up to two or three hours, um, just enjoying um, the facility and the equipment and really having a lot of fun with the green screen, et cetera. So uh, while Winchester has its own cable access station, I know uh, Arlington Community Media is always open um, to a visit from the Boy Scouts. Sounds like a great field trip. <laughs> Keep it in mind. I will. All right. Well, with that, I um, want to thank you again. Um, you've done a great job of explaining what it is that you do do and will be doing in and for town. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, on behalf of Ken Pruitt, our new energy and project manager, I'm James Milan. Thanks for watching. It's Talk of the Town. We'll see you again soon.